we're going to use algebra to create some images using squares. The rules are that the squares must be of different sizes. So this is totally unacceptable because here we have two squares of size 6 and two squares that are 3 by 3 and three squares that are 2 by 2. So this doesn't work at all. Let's accept that it's unrealistic for us to be able to just hand draw a construction of a rectangle with squares. That's much too difficult. But what we could do is we can quite easily make a rectangle made of uh, smaller rectangles, built of rectangles. That you can do quite readily. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make one of them x and one of them y and we're going to assume that those are squares. So the x in that rectangle, that actually we're going to algebraically assume that that's an x by x square and that the y rectangle, that's actually a y by y square. Well, what does that let us what does that tell us? Well, that tells us that the uh, square or rectangle on the right is x plus y. So the dimensions are x plus y by x plus y. What does that let us know? That, that tells us that the upper right, that must be 2x plus y, and that the lower right must be x plus 2y. Okay. What else do we know? Oh, we know that one over there. That's x plus 3y. And what is that one? Hmm. Well, we can, we can say that using this line, we can use that line, and then we can count on the bottom. That would be x plus 4y. That's the length on the bottom. So that must be the length on the top of the y, of, on, the, on top of the line as well. So x plus 4y minus x would be the question mark, right? So see, that's x plus 3y plus y. That's question mark plus x. So the x, so the question mark must be 4y. Let's see. Good. And that now allows us to solve for this square here. That's x plus 7y. And now we can solve for the big square in the top left, x plus 11y. OK. Now there's one line that we haven't used here so far, and that's this, this line here. So we're going to use that now. Let's count on the left-hand side. That's going to be x plus 15y. And on the right-hand side, 3x plus y. So those two have to be equal to each other, right? OK. Well, let's simplify. Let's bring all of the um, y's over to the left and all of the x's over to the right. So that's 14y is equal to 2x. Oh, and let's simplify. It will divide by 2 on each side. So that's 7y is equal to x. Well, there's many different solutions to that, but let's choose the most basic one that we can think of, and that is x is equal to 7 and y is equal to 1. Okay, so using that, we're going to be able to solve for all of these rectangles. So that, that's it there. Now, you see, whereas we couldn't before um, sketch a diagram of this, now we've got enough information that we're going to be able to sketch a diagram quite easily. Um, we know that the top left, well, that, that is a square 18 by 18. Underneath it is a square 14 by 14. So now it's going to be easy. Let's see, we're going to just go... That seemed easy, perhaps too easy. Is it possible to start with x and y in any position? Remember, we start started here with x and y. Is it possible to start, for example, over here? Well, let's see. Well, that tells us that Above, we have x plus y, and in the middle on the bottom, we have, that would be x minus y. But where do we go from here? We're stuck. So our technique doesn't work if we choose x and y poorly. Let's see if we can choose x and y somewhere else. What about over there? Does this work? 
So think about it. Uh, try to solve the problem. And then once you've had a good shot at it, come back and we'll look at the correct solution. Okay, here is x minus y. We can get to there, and then that can help us get to 2y minus x. That gives us 3y minus 2x, and we can get the upper right. That gives us 5y minus 3x. And what else can we do? Oh, we can get this one here, 4x minus 4y, just by using that line in the middle. And that gives us 5x minus 4y and 9x minus 8y. And then we can use the same line as we did last time. Compare the two sides. That gives us 13x minus 12y is equal to 8y minus 5x. Convince yourself that that's true. Okay. Now let's group terms. We're going to put the y's on the right and the x's on the left. So that's 13x plus 5x. It's 18x is equal to 20y. Simplify that's 9x is equal to 10y. Again, there's many solutions to that, but we're going to choose the simplest one. We're just going to say that x is equal to 10 and y is equal to 9. Okay, and let's see what that gives us. That gives us the exact same solution as we had before. So there is flexibility in choosing x and y where they are, but you have to be smart about it too. And maybe a bit lucky. <laughs> okay, now it's time for you to try some more. Um, there's going to be sheets throughout this presentation that you can download, print off, and fire off to your students. And they're all going to appear at the end of the presentation, but here is the first one that we've just worked on. And here is the second one for you to work on. Okay, so try to solve that. And whenever you've solved it, then come back and we'll talk about the solution. Okay, so what did, what did you choose as an x and y? Well, here we've chosen x and y uh, are in the middle, but you have much a lot of choice here. And that gives us x plus y, 2x plus y, 3x plus y, 4x, 4x minus y, 8x minus y, 12x minus 2y. And we can compare those, the two sides of that line. And that gives us x plus 2y is equal to 16x minus 3y. Grouping terms, we get 5y is equal to 15x or simplifying y is equal to 3x. So again, we're going to choose the simplest solution. We're going to say that y is equal to 3, x is equal to 1. And let's see what that produces. That produces, unfortunately, a graph that has two 4s and two 5s and two 6s. So this is not an acceptable solution according to our rules. But we can at least create it. Maybe you are interested in this for your own aesthetic, or your own warped sense of aesthetic sensibility. So here we go, let's um, go like that, and that, that would be a solution uh, if you don't mind having uh, two sixes and two fives. Okay, so according to my rules, that didn't work at all. <laughs> Next problem. Here it is. So take this, work on it, try to find uh, the solution, then come back. Or you can stay with me here for just a second and I will choose an x or a y and y and then you can go and work. Okay, so if you want to you can start work now. Okay, so if you chose x and y like that, then that gives us x plus y, x plus 2, here we go firing off there, and that's the solution. And now we compare across this line, and we get 12x minus 8y must be equal to 3x plus 8y. Okay, let's make those equal. And simplify. And that means that the simplest one that we could choose is x is equal to 16, y is equal to 9. 
Let's see if that works. Of course it will work. Right? Right, it works. So that was a solution. Now we have to uh, take away this uh, skew-wiffy diagram where all of the rectangles uh, need to be squares. So here we go, and we're adjusting, and that's the final solution. This is nearly a square. You can see that it's um, it's just a little bit off from being a perfect square. This was actually considered an impossible problem to make a perfect square using squares of all different sizes. But the person in the 1930s who discovered this was inspired to keep looking because of how close this specific solution was. Here's the next problem. So solve that. I'll give you the answer in five seconds. Four, three, two, one, zero. There's a solution and we'll make that a square. No surprises. Next problem. If you want the x and y, my choice of an x and y, I'll give those to you in a second. Or you can try to solve it without any hints at all. Okay, here's my, solu my choice for an x and y. So now you should turn off the video and try to solve it. Okay, so that allows you to get all of your squares labeled. And then we can equate across this line here. And that gives us 4x minus 7y is equal to 31y minus 2x. And reorganizing gives 3x is equal to 19y. So that allows us simply to solve. Do you see anything funny there? Well, one thing that we have not used is that the 7 is bigger or smaller than the 5, or that the 48 is bigger or smaller than the 50. And you see that the solution that we have here is ridiculous. So the first thing we have to do is we have to adjust our rectangles. We have to elongate those ones and shorten those ones. So now it makes sense because now the 7 is bigger than the 5 and the 48 is smaller than the 50. That makes sense. Now we can go forth and make it make everything a square. Solved. Algebra triumphs again. Next problem. So you can try to solve it now or you can wait for me to give you my choice of x and y. These are my choices and now go forth and solve in terms of x and y. Here are the solutions and now we can equate along this line here to give 10x minus 7y is equal to 5y and simplifying we get 5x is equal to 6y. Let's say that x is equal to 6, y is equal to 5 and solve for all of the squares and this is what we get. You notice there's a problem over at the right hand side. 23 looks like it's larger than 24 so we have to fix that first of all. But now we've got an even bigger problem. We've got a square with minus 3 edge length. Oh! Algebra has gone down in flames! <laughs> it failed us! So everything here is algebraically correct but of course we can't have a square with a minus 3 side length. So failure, we can't solve this. Uh, there's no solution because you can try using um, all other possibilities given that 5x is equal to 6y and you will find that none of them work. This is a truly tough problem and I present it here only to show you the limitations of algebra. So I, I I cringe whenever I see something like this, but this is this is what we had to, what I had to do to solve it. First of all, I set up with three variables instead of two, and this is as far as I got, and I still failed. So you see, I would need to introduce even more variables in order to solve this. Ouch! <laughs> now, uh, in order to make life a little bit easier for you, but not too easy. This is still by far the toughest problem that you'll find on this 
uh, in this presentation, I've given you these three hints. So uh, 4x means, of course, that that square is going to end up to have four times the edge length of the square with, with just x in it. You ready for the solution? Okay, here it comes. So there it is. I've reproduced all of the worksheets at the end of the presentation. You can also think about creating your own worksheets and getting your students to create your own ones. Uh, just get them started out with making a rectangle and then filling it with smaller rectangles and then start out labeling X and Y and hopefully solving it. Enjoy! Thank you.